We're gonna go ahead and get started, so if you could take your seats. I'm Sheila Edwards-Lang, the president here at Seattle Central College. And on behalf of the Seattle Colleges, I want to acknowledge the land on which we stand today as the traditional home of the Coast Salish people, the traditional home of tribes and bands within the Duwamish, Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. Without them, we would not have access to this gathering and to this dialogue. I ask that we take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land who are still here today. So thank you all for joining us today. As the president of Seattle Central, I'm excited to welcome you to my campus. And this is Superintendent Juno's first State of the District address, and it is fitting that we welcome her here to Seattle Central and you all for this initial address. Because I'm gonna speak to you tonight from three perspectives. I am a proud graduate of public schools. I am a passionate advocate for educational equity, and I'm a college president who is committed to partnering with the Seattle Public Schools to serve our community and our children. I am a graduate of public school, not here in Seattle, although many people think that I went to Garfield for some reason. Um, but I am the proud auntie of a West Seattle High School graduate. So West Seattle folks in the house. I firmly believe that public education is the bedrock of our democracy. Public education ensures that everyone, regardless of their background, has the education and skills needed to be a participant in our economy, that they have the civic and leadership skills needed to participate in our democracy, and that they have a pathway to a career that provides a living wage for them and their family. As an advocate for educational equity, I've been pleased to be a member of the board of the Alliance for Education, especially as it has pivoted its focus to one of partnership and educational equity. The board is committed to being a great partner to Seattle Public Schools, and we are honored to be in this work with them. If there are Alliance board members here, can you wave your hand? Thank you all for being here. Finally, as president of Seattle Central, I'm committed to partnering with Seattle Public Schools. The leadership of all three of the Seattle colleges, North Seattle, South Seattle, and the district, and I know that our chancellor, Dr. Sean Pan, is here somewhere in the audience. If, if, I can't see because I have this light in my face, but Dr. Pan, if you're here, can you wave and big thank you for being here supporting us. We are so enthusiastic about our work with the Seattle Public Schools and the city of Seattle, and I know that Dwayne Chappelle is in the house, the Director of the Department of Education and Early Learning. Thank you for being here. The three of us are partnering to offer the Seattle Promise, and thanks to voters, every graduate of Seattle Public Schools will have an opportunity to attend any Seattle college tuition-free starting next year. Both the city levy and the recently passed Seattle school levy fund broader access to early childhood education, teacher diversity, enhanced college and career readiness in our community, and the colleges are partners in much of this work as well as Promise. You will hear more about, from, about this work from Superintendent Juno um, as she and the school board are leading this new work as part of their strategic plan and the role that partnerships will play in that work. But at the heart of all of this work is our students. Seattle's student voice has been an, very important throughout the strategic planning process, and I'm honored today to be able to introduce you to two young leaders. So then they are both members of the stu superintendent's student advisory committee. It's my pleasure to introduce Nihan Wong and Angelina Wrighty. Please join me in welcoming them to the stage.
Good evening. My name is Gerald Donaldson as we get settled. I'm the family support worker at Lester Elementary School. <laughs> Today we're here to talk about some of the programs we have at Lester, two in particular. One is our student equity team, which is kindergarten through fifth grade. It started three years ago. We've had a parent equity team and a staff equity team, and sometimes our arrogance gets in the way and we forgot about the people we really serve. So three years ago, we decided to start our student equity team. So it's been good. We did the stress importance of student voice, and there's been some changes at Les Eyes, thanks to our young kings and queens. At this time, I'd like to introduce one of our young men, Stephen. He's gonna talk about one of the programs we have. It's called the Turtle Award. Hi, everyone, my name is Stephen. Today I will be talking about the Turtle Award. It's about in, what I say? encouraging people to stand up to bullying and being courageous and sticking your neck out for other people. And once again, thank you everyone. <laughs> This time I'd like to introduce Lusa. She's uh, one of our fifth graders. She's been with us since birth of the program. She's gonna talk about the importance of student voice. Hello, my name is Lusa, I'm fifth grade, and I think student voice is important because it lets you have different perspectives instead of just an assumption so that you don't just feel stuck with an emotion. It's important that you have a safe place to share your thoughts and emotions. Um, you should have different perspectives on things instead of just assumptions from the adults. Everyone should be able to share out and feel confident and safe about their opinions and their perspectives on different things. Good evening, my name is John Gladney and I am one of the mentors at Leshi Elementary School. I had the Rising Suns. It is a program that is uh, really focused on African American males helping build confidence and really just unleashing the potential that they have to be future leaders. So I'd love Samuel to speak a little bit. He's one of our future engineers and talk about some of the things we do in Rising Suns. In Rising Suns, we learn about black history and our culture. We, and also, we are leaders in the school and in the community, so it's our responsibility to be role models to the younger ones. We were, we were doing our own dances and drumming in the, MLK, the Martin Luther King event. We are partnering with the Senior Center at, d with doing Day Without Hate campaign and other stuff that helps our community and our school. I'd also like to introduce uh, Mr. Patrick. Um, and if you could just tell us a little bit about some of the things that have uh, helped you change. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Patrick, and I'm in the fifth grade. Rising Suns has changed my mindset and my behavior and pushed me to achieve my goals. One of my goals are to become a judge. My hardworking grandma, mom, and dad have inspired me. I used to be off track in class. Mr. Glani would help me problem solve. I used to have problems with my teachers that caused me frustration. All the anger and stress in my life was holding me back. We work together with my teachers to understand each other better and connect and understand what our barriers were. I took all the Rising Suns meetings, teacher meetings, and the information to heart. So now I come to school with a positive attitude. It makes my experience better in class. Teachers and students are happier to interact with me and my grades and, and attendance have improved. 
I am proud to be a rising sun. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Um, thank you, President Edwards Lang, for the little bit early, but very warm welcome. <laughs> um, it's so inspiring to hear from Leshai's young scholars. My name is Mian Wong. I'm a junior at Franklin High School. Good evening, and I'm Angelina O'Reilly, a sophomore at Rainier Beach High School. We are both proud to be student representatives on the Superintendent's Student Advisory Board. So thank you guys for being here tonight. I was personally really excited to participate on the Student Advisory Board. It means a lot to have the superintendent reach out and ask students to help solve problems. The district needs students to make change and then help spread that change to schools across the district. We are the ones experiencing education in Seattle Public Schools, the next generation of leaders and the up and coming workforce. So our education really matters to us. We want our learning to be relevant and to set, to set us up to make a difference in the world. I was interested in joining the Student Advisory Board because I wanted to be a part of something bigger than myself bigger than my 12 person student body, bigger than my school and bigger and have the opportunity to, have, to effectively introduce positive change while collaborating with others. As a group, we've been empowered to deep, to deep dive into situations where students are concerned about and come up with solutions. We started with lots of different ideas and we've now narrowed our work down to a few areas, areas that align well with this district's new strategic plan. The four issues we are working on are teacher accountability, educational content that promotes diversity, improving supports and access for students receiving specialized services, and revamping the health education in Seattle Public Schools. Centering the work on students and our ideas is critical. We know what will work, and we know how education can be improved because we're living in it every day. Superintendent Juno has tasked us with doing this work and advising her on tough issues. It is no surprise she asked for our help. She has a track record of empowering young people. She had a student advisory board in Montana, and like us, they were charged with making real change. I'm really excited to see what we can do together in Seattle and to be a part of that positive change. A couple unknown facts about Denise Juno. She was the first Native American woman to serve in a statewide elected executive position anywhere in the country. She, served, she scored 31 points to set Browning High's school girls basketball team record, and she loves corny jokes. <laughs> so in honor of our superintendent, we will be welcoming her to the stage with a joke. <laughs> what do you call the security guards who work at the Samsung store? I don't know, what do you call it exactly? <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> well, that was really corny. And it is now our great pleasure to introduce to you Denise Juno, fan of corny jokes and the superintendent of the Seattle Public Schools. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the State of Seattle School District. We are calling it Equity and Excellence because that is our path forward. I'm Denise Juno, proud superintendent and number one fan of our 53,000 students. And thank you, Angelina and Mian, for the great introduction. I guess my reputation of enjoying a good joke has spread across the city. Um, in fact, on my way here today, I saw a guy with these games and all of a sudden out spilled out all the Scrabble letters on the road. And so I stopped to ask him, so what's the word on the street? Yeah. 
thank you. I like that person. So. Also, um, thank you to Leshai's student race and equity team and Rising Sun's representatives for centering tonight's conversation on the importance of student voice. Also, thank you to the Rainier Beach High School String Quartet and Flute Trio that you heard um, setting the stage as you entered into the um, area. They were great. And thank you, President Edwards Lang, for welcoming us into your house and for your personal commitment to Seattle Public School students and their families. Did you know that three out of four Seattle graduates enroll right away into a two-year or four-year program? I know we are both excited about the Seattle Promise and the great opportunities that will arise as a result of our partnership with the city. We now have the potential to make a college education and a career certification a reality for every prepared Seattle Public School graduate. I saw Sheila earlier this week, and I see her a lot in different circles, but I asked her for advice about my speech tonight. And she told me, just be yourself. You have such a warm personality. And I thought, wow, that's so nice um, to hear from a college president. And then I looked up the word warm in the dictionary, and it said, not so hot. Um, so I'm not sure if that was a compliment or not. Um, I also um, want to thank the Alliance for Education for being a sponsor of this event. I look forward to doing great things with you on behalf of Seattle Public Schools going into the future. And I want to thank City Year for helping us out here tonight. How awesome are they at making us feel welcome? And thanks to all of you for being here, for showing up and demonstrating once again Seattle's unwavering commitment to public education. When I was a young girl growing up on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in Montana, I would have never dreamed that my path would lead me to Seattle Public Schools. My family has long roots in public education and in public service. My grandmother was a school cook for 28 years. My grandfather was a truancy officer, a bus driver, and a police officer. My dad was a school counselor, administrator, superintendent, and a school board member. My mom opened our, our community's first alternative school, created our community's first tribal college, and served in the state legislature. It's from their work and advocacy that I learned my values of looking out for others, to work toward bending the arc of history toward justice, and to make sure that the plans we lay support the next seven generations. Seattle's strong progressive values and commitment to racial equity led me here to my new home. Oki, Nixikuwax, Nitanaku, Utsqui, Sisikiaki. In the Blackfeet language, that means, hello, my friends and relatives. My name is Blue Cloud Woman. Seattle Public Schools has students and families that speak over 100 heritage languages, and that's something to be celebrated. However, you just heard the extent of Blackfeet language that I know. I did not have the opportunity to learn it from my family because they didn't know it either. They didn't know it because the history of education for Native Americans is one of trauma and oppression. When this country was being populated because of the Eastern invasion, Native Americans were seen as a burden to be overcome and not included. Young children were torn from their families and sent to boarding schools far away from their home. These boarding schools cut their hair, stamped out their language, forced them to speak English, assimilated them to a school not of their making, and focused on killing the Indian and saving the man. Growing up in a community dealing with the outcomes of significant historical trauma, the result of educational oppression, it became my life's calling to undo the legacies of racism in our education system and to lay the groundwork for future generations to define their own life outcomes and help them achieve their dreams. It's these values that drew me to Seattle and why I'm happy to be leading this district because of all of you believe that is the right work to do too. So I'm pleased to be here with all of you this evening to celebrate our good work that is steeped in equity. To lay out the hard work currently going on in partnership with over 300 organizations. To boldly confront our challenges and our shortcomings and lay out our vision to unapologetically work toward racial equity in Seattle Public Schools, and to call on all of us 
to work together to make our schools successful. I have to tell you that I have learned so much since arriving in Seattle, and not all of it school related. A few things that I've encountered are so, so, so very different from Montana. For example, I've learned that dogs here in Seattle wear raincoats. <laughs> yep, seen a lot of them. Um, I've learned that grocery stores literally run out of food and supplies when it snows here. <laughs> yep, saw all the pictures. I've learned here it, that in, here in Seattle, people like to snap instead of applaud, something different. Yeah. I have learned that wearing socks with sand, sandals is a totally acceptable fashion statement. Yeah, that's, I've seen it, I've seen it. I have learned that there is a lot of coffee in Seattle. Seriously, like a lot. <laughs> And there are also really great restaurants. I went to a brand new one the other night. Uh, it's called Karma. And it doesn't have menus. You just get what you deserve. <laughs> I have also learned that Seattle is a collection of unique neighborhoods, each with its own flavor. Each of these neighborhoods, with their schools, weave the tapestry of our city, each bringing their own threads that braids together to create the rich texture and complexity of our school system. This tapestry all works together to produce students that are very thoughtful and creative. They are not the leaders of tomorrow, they are leaders today. You've seen a sample of our students on stage this evening. They are advocating for change, and we are listening. Students are taking charge of their own learning and growth. I recently met a third grade student at Beacon Hill Elementary. This student struggled with attendance, and the week I visited, he was on time and ready to learn all week. It was a huge step for him, and one that he was really, really proud of. So proud, in fact, that when the principal announced that the superintendent was visiting his school, he thought I was there to give him the superintendent's award. <laughs> So I've learned, carry around a few things. Um, up on the screen should be Stephen. Um, you just met him tonight, and I recently met him at Leshai as well. He informed me when I asked him, what does he teach adults? And he said, adults need to listen more and talk less. He is wiser than his years. I plan to follow Stephen's leadership advice as we implement our new strategic plan. You heard from some other powerful Leshai Elementary students as well. They helped me realize that we have a lot of work to do. We need to build a system where adults develop deep relationships with young people, just like you saw this evening. They need to help our youngest learners navigate a system and a society that isn't always fair, kind, or supportive. A system that was not built to make sure all students thrive. A system that we need to push back against to make it flex, transform, and work for every student. And these strong girls, showing off their power pose after sharing with me a poem called Hey Black Child. These students are our future. They are fierce, focused, and brilliant. It's because of my experience with these students and so many others that I can tell you that the state of Seattle Public Schools is optimistic and poised for great things. I have visited 78 schools, and I'll visit all of them by the end of the year. Our teachers, school leaders, and staff are dream makers. Our educators, and I use that term to include everyone who works in the district, they show up every day to proudly do their jobs because they know that their work leads to student success. From the custodial engineer, to the nutrition service worker, to teachers, to school leaders, to central administration, all of us help create the right circumstances for student learning. And our generous partners work alongside us to provide academic supports, mentorship, internships, and help to meet students' basic needs like food, school supplies, and housing. All of us help young people achieve their dreams. This constellation of supports has created a system we should all be proud of. When we look at nearly every measure of a successful school system, 
Seattle Public Schools outperforms the state and many of our national peers too. I think people forget that we have high academic scores and high graduation rates. And it's important to recognize that our district scores 13 points higher in math and 10 points higher in English language arts than the rest of the state. It's no small feat for an urban district. Our graduation rate has increased by 11% over the last five years, with students of color making the most notable gains. While we celebrate success for many of our students, we are also boldly confronting our challenges. We have a long way to go before we can truly celebrate these great educational outcomes for every student. Our gaps are still way too large, and our system still has to change a lot to meet the needs of each student. This is why our new strategic plan is laser focused on supporting students of color furthest from educational justice. Because we are such a strong district, because we are so strong, we can prioritize this next phase of work and push ourselves to be better and to do better. And I'm in it for the long haul. I'm here with you to make sure that we get this done. Last month, our board of directors unanimously voted to approve the new strategic plan. I want to thank them for their courage in setting this vision for the district. President Leslie Harris, Vice President Rick Burke, Member at Large Zachary DeWolf, Betty Patu, Jill Geary, Scott Pinkham, and Eden Mack, will you please stand so we can publicly thank you for all that you do for Seattle students and families. I also want to thank my senior leadership team, everybody who's here, and all the staff of Seattle Public Schools for being brave and for all that they are going to do to make sure this strategic plan is successful. Will senior leadership please stand? Plus, I can tell who's not here now, so. <laughs> Our new strategic plan reflects what I heard from students, families, staff, and the broader community during my Listen and Learn tour. And it reflects our shared commitment to racial equity and justice. Unlike prior plans, this one embodies the word strategic. While our ongoing work to provide excellence to all of our students will continue, this plan has clarity, about what we're going to accomplish for underserved students and families. We are committed to providing high quality learning and instruction, especially for students of color who are furthest from educational justice. This means that we will need to target supports and change our practices. Early literacy will be one of our key initiatives, an initiative in which the entire community can engage, from public libraries to preschools to our educators and families at home we will be focused on making sure students are reading by third grade. I keep a data sheet on my desk at work that shows 36% of African American third graders are proficient in reading. 36%. That means 64% are not. And we have similar statistics for other students of color and students experiencing poverty. That is unacceptable. Knowing how to read well changes life outcomes for students and sets them on a path to success. We will no longer sit by as a district and let our school system fail yet another generation of children. I also had conversations with hundreds of young people of color. All of them shared that learning from someone who looks like them at some point in their educational career is critically important. Access to educators that recognize their gifts cultural strengths, and lived experience is critical. Building a culturally responsive workforce is one of our strategic priorities, a priority that the Student Advisory Board is already working on and our partners are helping us to address. A desire for consistency and predictability in district operations also came up in every space I visited. This includes making sure students are delivered to school in a timely manner, attend a school that is ready to go on the first day, and are served nutritious, delicious meals. These supports play a key role in student success 
and they need to be a seamless experience so we can have a laser-like focus on teaching and learning. And we cannot disrupt systems of oppression and make sure public education prepares every student for success without authentically engaging with our community, especially those students and families that have been neglected and disregarded and shut out. We will work to include communities of color in our decision making because they know what works. They know how to change systems that aren't working for their children and to build conditions for success. We will take our cues from those who know best. This work is not about changing our students. Our students come to us with unique strengths and unique stories. There are no broken students. There are only broken systems. We need to evolve as a system into what our students need. It is our job to transform and get students to where they want to go. We need to be dream makers for every student through equity and excellence. And I know this is possible. The evidence is already in our classrooms, our community spaces, and demonstrated every day in so many ways. I look forward to leading this district as we implement our new strategic plan. There's so much work to be done, and we cannot do it alone. That's why we need our staff, our board, our families and students, the Alliance for Education, Seattle Colleges, the city, and all of our over 300 partners to make this a reality. I hope you join us to help us create a place where every student reads by third grade, a place where every teacher can relate to every student, and where students see educators who look like them, a place where our operational systems are integrated into teaching and learning, and a place where every community feels that it's heard. That's my ask of you. Join us as we make Seattle Public Schools a national leader in equity and excellence. Thank you. We're also going to take a little bit of time tonight to celebrate and acknowledge individuals, organizations, and partners who are helping students reach their dreams and who are leading the way. The stories you're about to learn should give us all hope that the goals outlined in this new strategic plan are achievable. If we center our work on students, coordinate our efforts, and all commit to this most important work. When I arrived in July 2018, I made a commitment to build a longer table and to deeply engage families, partners, and those furthest away from educational justice in the strategic work of Seattle Public Schools. Tonight, I want to thank the many, many individuals, partners, and community organizations that pulled up a chair, graciously set the table, and welcomed me into their community spaces to learn about their challenges, hopes, and dreams of our students and families. It was a gift that has helped set the district's course for the next five years. In fall of 2018, Superintendent Juno uh, embarked on the, the listening and learning tour, which gave her an opportunity to learn about the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of Seattle schools, families, kids, and community partners. As a team, we worked to kind of identify community partners that have been doing ongoing engagement with us and develop models and approaches that honored the work that they've done in the community, honored their connections, and honored our partnership with them. The numerous partners were charged with finding venues, making sure that they're culturally appropriate, making sure that families and the broader community were engaged. To have it come from communities allowed us to engage more authentically. Our partners were able to bridge those gaps and create very real spaces of dialogue, of communication. It was so different and so unique. And what that tells us is that's the diversity of our school communities. And we have to be able to respect and really value how our partners show up. It was um, honestly one of the most humbling moments to see all the different rituals and rites that we share. Deep gratitude to all the partners that worked with us. 
Please help me recognize everyone that either hosted a Listen and Learn session, sat in on a Strategic Plan Steering Committee, or hosted a Strategic Plan Feedback Session. This work is yours. Thank you for your commitment to our students and community, so please stand to be recognized. Representation matters. Having a culturally responsive workforce, a workforce that reflects the strengths and lived experience of our diverse students was the number one request from young people across the city. We cannot do this work alone. The Seattle Teacher Residency Program is an innovative partnership with the Seattle Education Association, the Alliance for Education, and the University of Washington. It has helped us to create a pipeline of incredible teachers for Seattle Public Schools and helps us to recruit and retain educators of color. The Seattle Teacher Residency is a teacher preparation program that is a specific partnership between the University of Washington College of Education and Seattle Public Schools, along with the Seattle Education Association and the Alliance for Education that is designed to specifically prepare people to work in the high poverty schools of Seattle. And so the program is designed to intentionally recruit people that are interested in committing to work in Title I schools in Seattle and ha receive a full year of preparation that is specifically um, focused on understanding the context of Seattle and preparing to work in those schools. Um, so you're taking coursework, you're a grad student, but you're also a teacher in the classroom. So you're splitting your time between teaching kids and being a student yourself. It is really challenging to be a teacher, uh, so to get the mentorship from a teacher with you who is sharing their classroom and their space with you uh, every day is big. 70% of our grads are in 11 schools. Having a cluster of grads in, their, in the school can shift the culture and community. It not only has an impact on the school community as a whole, but has an impact on their sense of efficacy and community amongst them as a group. Being with the cohorts is really important. Uh, teaching by itself can be a really isolating profession. So to have a group of people who have the same experiences, who have learned how to teach math the same way, who have had social justice conversations, who have this really same similar experience, it's really important. The curriculum of the program is grounded in a set of practices that we hope are preparing teachers to think about equity and the, that work throughout the program starts with doing our own identity work so that we understand who we are and the privileges and power we might have in relation to who's in our classroom and the families and communities that also are part of that school. I deserved a good education when I was a kid. Uh, I deserved someone who looked like me in my school when I was a kid. Um, I deserved someone who cared when I was a kid. These students need people who care about them. These students need teachers who love them. These students need teachers who are willing to do the work for them. And just, these students need people who are dedicated. Seattle Teacher Residency Partners, thank you for your unwavering commitment to Seattle Public Schools, our students, and our greater community. The work you do with us today lays the groundwork for the next seven generations. Please stand and be recognized. Tonight, we celebrate two individuals that make schools run seamlessly, and while this is really important, the most remarkable thing about them, about them both, is how student success and relationships center their work. My first job in high school was working alongside my grandmother, the school cook, in her kitchen during lunchtime. She took great pride in serving nutritious, delicious food for breakfast and lunch, 
but she was most proud of building strong relationships with students and advocating for them was her most important contribution. Mr. Marcus is the cafeteria manager at Hawthorne Elementary. He is the life of the cafeteria. His commitment to building relationships, making sure students are ready for learning, and being that one adult a student can come to with any little issue reflects the values of Seattle Public Schools. My grandmother, Margie Juno, would be very proud. Boon Ma will be celebrating 19 years with Seattle Public Schools this September. His work between his office at the John Stanford Center and providing custodial assistance to all 102 schools in the district is more than a job. You heard that correctly. He provides assistance to all 102 schools. He does whatever it takes to make sure our schools all across this city, day or night, are safe, welcoming, and ready for student learning. Let's hear more about their contributions to Seattle Public Schools. I'm working with the district for, this is my 19 years coming on September. I'd like to be helping uh, the district, uh, helping the kids to get the, the pay clean up and we have a good pay for kids to, to learn. That's my, my role, make sure every building get ready for the next day for the student to learn. Having custodial engineers in each school, you know, make it uh, an environment that is uh, where kids can be ready to learn and uh, make it a welcoming place. Uh, uh, students spend an enormous amount of time in school, as do our employees, and you know, we want to make it as welcoming um, and as clean and as safe environment as we can. In the middle of the night, things happen, you know, can happen in any location, and with 102 schools in service right now, two more on the way, you know, that's a huge portfolio um, to be uh, kind of responsible for. As a custodian for Seattle Public School, this is the best job for me forever. I think that he, like, he helps the students right during lunchtime, the lunch room over there, and you should have more credit for all the work he does. Thank you all custodians who work in different schools and this school. Thank you. What we've heard about the environment in Hawthorne is, you know, the cafeteria, the cafeteria staff led by Marcus is, you know, just a great place to be. It's a great place to have lunch. It's a great place to take a break. I usually get here about 6 in the morning. Um, I just basically start cooking and we start breakfast about 7.35, uh, but I have rules. Uh, kids need structure, so I give them all rules and once we get the rules down pat, everything gets easier. Here, um, he's the kind of the life of the cafeteria. Um, he knows all the kids, he's interacting with all the kids, uh, has high expectations for them um, as far as the way they conduct themselves. He makes lunch better for the kids, for sure. Gavin? Um, the pancakes are like his specialty. What about the spices he puts on top of the burrito? Yeah, that, those are good. Uh, my mother actually used to be the manager here, um, and uh, so she was here for about six, seven years. My most important thing are these babies. They don't care about how much money you make. They don't care what you look like. They don't care about pretty much anything other than show up every day. Okay, perfect. I will see you on Monday. Deal? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Marcus and Boon Ma. Please stand and be recognized. You for doing the work that matters to so many of our students. Asa Mercer International Middle School reflects the very best of Seattle. Equity, inclusion, and collaboration center everything taking place in the school. Everyone from the front office staff to partners in the school share an unwavering belief in student potential. That's the Mercer mindset. And their data demonstrates this belief. Asa Mercer has the highest student outcomes for African American males in Seattle Public Schools. There is not a secret formula, but there is strong school leadership, high quality teaching and collaboration, 
adults' positive beliefs in students, and students' belief in themselves. All approaches that have proven to be successful. And the school has been generously supported by partners like the Ness Homes, City Year, and so many others. I want to thank Principal Carter, who taught at Mercer for six years and has led the school for seven for his tremendous leadership. As he moves on to another leadership opportunity in a different district, I know he will carry with him lessons learned in Seattle, and his wisdom will help even more students. You know, we're a big school. We have 1,160 kids here. Where it really makes Mercer great, you know, it really begins with beliefs and uh, the value that we bring to every day with what kids can do in their potential. In terms of high quality instruction, you know, being very purposeful and intentional with what we do every day. So it's really about what we do as adults that makes the biggest difference. The consistency, I think, is huge here. And I think, like, consistency among teachers, consistency amongst just, like, high expectations. Adults support kids a lot. Um, they encourage us to have our grades up. Our curriculum, we don't do whole class novels, right? You're sitting in, this is my classroom library, right? And so a big thing is like kids are picking books that they want to read that they see themselves in. In Mercer, there's a lot of books, but they don't just have your typical Caucasian characters. They have um, characters you can see yourself in. I feel so strongly that I think that Mr. Carter, he just really trusts his teachers. It sets the tone of the school. It's because he trusts teachers, teachers feel empowered to try new things and trust themselves and do things. Like we're all in this one community doing this thing and everyone's gonna make it and everyone's gonna do it. I think that mindset, I think that's a Mercer mindset. It's from admin, it's from teachers, it's from kids. And so it just trickles down to like, to be successful. It makes me more comfortable that I'm in an environment that really shows my culture and others' cultures, and they acknowledge it. I want to thank him for all the wonderful years he provided while I was at this school. Hey, Mr. Carter, I love you. I wish you well in your future endeavors. Thank you for opening your doors of Mercer to me and trusting me to carry your children into the next generation with skills that they didn't think they can learn. Wear your crown even if you have to draw it on yourself, King. Thank you, Mr. Carter, for being an amazing principal and helping ASB out. Mr. Carter, I just want to say, now you know I love you. I wish you the best going to a new school district. You will truly be missed. Hey, Mr. Carter, wishing you the best on your new endeavors to your new school district. Uh, over the past three years, Mr. Carter has been a, a great role model to me and has helped me out a lot. Mr. Carter, I love you so much. You always give me candy and food, and like that fills up my stomach for the rest of the day. I call you big man, you don't mind it, and you're heck of funny. We're gonna miss you, Mr. Carter, and I love you as, as a principal and as a teacher, and thank you for leading me into my future. I want to also just thank Principal Carter and the entire staff at Asa Mercer International Middle School for your leadership. Um, I wish you well, and I just want everybody to know that this district is full of Chris Carters, full of them, and this is how we're going to succeed moving forward, but thank you for your tremendous leadership. And thank you all again to all of our staff, partners, and individuals for showing us the way. Equity and excellence is possible. Making sure that every student in Seattle graduates ready to make their dreams a reality is attainable. I look to many of you in this room to help us. It is the most important work of our lifetimes. Eliminating academic disparities is no small task. We are at a point in our history as a community and as a nation that we cannot just be world class, we have to be world leading. This means every student needs to find success 
and I believe that we can do it. Together, we can provide each and every student the education and future they deserve. From the bus stop to the boardroom, it is up to all of us to make sure every young person gets a shot at becoming well-educated and realizes their hopes and dreams. Collectively, I know that we have the knowledge, the resources, and the ability to bring about the changes that we want to see. And I know the school board and I look forward to doing this work with you. I want to call up and please welcome your board president, Leslie Harris, to help close out this evening. And thanks again to all of you for coming out. Thank you for being here. Thank you ever so much for being here. This is the hardest and the best work of my life, and I do it with people that I respect beyond. I do it with my colleagues. I do it with staff. And we're working really, really hard, and we're working with your assistance. I'm proud of the progress we've made. And did we not do real well there with the hiring of our superintendent or what? <laughs> proud of that. Proud of the distance that we've come. Those of y'all that know me um, know that I'm a graduate of Seattle Public Schools. I'm a parent of a Seattle Public School child that has graduated. And it's about opportunity. And I've been lucky enough that my daughter went to Pathfinder Alternative K through 8 and received an extraordinary education in a community of loving and talented people. And a lot of the crazy work that we do on the board, and it is a very heavy lift, and a frustrating one, quite frankly, is payback for that community and giving her the start. It's also a thank you and payback to Middle College High School that used to be at the South Seattle College campus who saved my foster's life. She would not be here, she would not be a success, and she would not be a mother of two beautiful children without those talented teachers taking her under her wing, their wings, and giving her tough love and the opportunity to recognize that she had gifts and that she was smart. And yes, maybe she'd messed up in her academic career previous to that, but that she was capable of great things. And I want that kind of an opportunity for every one of our 52,000 students. And I hesitate often speaking for the board of directors, even though I have the title, which, again, if you told me that five or six years ago, A, I would be on the board of directors, and B, I'd be serving my second term of president out of spit in your eye. Didn't see it coming. But timing is everything, and when opportunity presents itself and you care deeply, you stand up and hold hands with the people that are making a difference. And in some small way, I hope I am, but I know the board of directors, your elected citywide board of directors are working their backsides off with staff, with our new superintendent, and with every one of the Seattle Public School employees. Just take a moment, close your eyes, and imagine our city. Our city with enormous wealth and process where every single student thrives. Every single student thrives and is inspired to look within themselves and to learn and reach for the sky. What an extraordinary community we can and should and must be. Absolutely have to do it. 
Denise, Superintendent Juno, talked about the work of our time and our disparities. And I said, sitting next to one of my heroes, Sheila Edwards Lang, it's not just disparities, it's immoral, and it's not acceptable. I would like to take a point of personal privilege and recognize Deputy Stephen Nielsen, Deputy Superintendent Steele Nielsen, Our district is full of unsung heroes, and Stephen came back to the district with an extraordinary wealth of knowledge and is a troubleshooter and is not often recognized, and he has given us his resignation to join his wife, a school teacher, in retirement at the end of this school year. And you, sir, will be very missed, and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, deep felt thanks. I look forward to the, the partnerships. I look forward to picking your pockets. I look forward to your legislative advocacy. 52,000 students, 102 schools and counting, and we're gonna do great things. And it's now my pleasure to welcome the Nathan Hale Jazz Choir to close out the evening. Thanks again.